everyone. This is Faith of Faith and Books. How are you doing? I want to talk about Jennifer Brooks. I want to talk about how she influenced me and what kind of impact she had on me and how much I enjoyed her booktube channel and how how really uh, sorry I am that she passed. Uh, it's really hit me and partly because I think that she uh, is the same age, or was the same age as my, uh, my son, my oldest son. So my heart goes out to her mother. So if you don't know, Jennifer Brooks had a booktube channel. I think she had close to 7,000 followers and she was just 31 years old and she just had a birthday in December and she had a wonderful booktube channel. She uh, read the classics, she read fantasy, she read widely and she just had a wonderful personality. And she suddenly passed away January 3rd. Her mother posted um, uh, on her channel just a, a paragraph explaining the, the bare facts about her passing. Um, and uh, it's quite a shock. Uh, the unknown causes. Uh, that's the second time that's happened that to somebody I know who's been just in their very early 30s who suddenly passed away it is either last year or was it the year before? It's 2022, I think. Um, someone that I knew's daughter suddenly passed away like that too. I, I just don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Jennifer. We don't have the facts. I tried to find her obituary. I tried to find the funeral home and the link was um, hijacked. So you, it takes you off to some crazy place where they are trying to scam you, um, which is so frustrating, so evil, because I really wanted to find out what had happened to her and, and try to get more facts. But anyway, that was the second time, I mean, What's going on? Why are young women dying suddenly for no reason? It's crazy. I had never heard of it before until this other young woman passed away suddenly. And then this to Jennifer, it just seems crazy to me. Anyway, I'm really feeling her loss because she has had so much influence on me, even though, you know, she's, she could be my daughter. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about that. So I had to go back and do a little research because my memory is so bad. But I started my YouTube channel in 2019, I believe, for that Victober, because I had just stumbled on to BookTube, to BookTube very soon before that, very, shortly before that, and I um, I had heard about this thing Victober. I, I remember it was uh, Katie at Books and Things was the first one that I saw about Victober, and then I think I found. Ka Kate Howe. I cannot remember when I got to Jennifer's channel, but she also would post a lot about uh, Victober. So I think I must have stumbled onto her channel around that time. Um, but anyway, I know, or I think I know, if I'm remembering right, that by the time March came around, and that was March 2020, um, and COVID hit, I, I already knew that she had studied Latin. So I think, and I could be wrong, so correct me. Please tell me if you can find her obituary, first of all, um, and let me know, and correct me if I'm saying anything wrong. But I think that she studied classics for a while, and then she switched to straight up history, I think. But I know she studied Latin, and she, she read like a lot of uh, classic literature. And I, at that time, was taking uh, the, I was studying for the National Latin Exam Level 3, and I took it the night before everything shut down in Virginia for COVID. So that night, I remember meeting with the group that was studying, and, and we were going to take the test, and we were all like, uh-oh, you know, you know what's about to hit the, hit the fan. And, and it did. The next morning, that's when they announced everything was shut down. So I knew that she had studied Latin, I'm pretty sure. And I think we had chatted about Latin, like in the comment section. And then um, and then when that happened, when everything was shut down and my husband had to work from home and my son was put on furlough and my daughter who was away at school had to come home and take online classes and my son who was living at home but commuting to school, he had to stay home and take classes and my 
my little, well, he's now my grandson. It's a complicated story, but we have my oldest daughter now. She's adopted now, but she was a refugee. She just was granted asylum right before Christmas this year. So it was a wonderful Christmas present. Um, she's been waiting for seven years, but she had come to live with us when her baby was four months old and we have been raising him ever since. And we formally adopted her last year because she's like a daughter and he's like a grandson. We wanted to make it official. So he had been going to preschool and the preschool shut down. And so in the mornings I was watching him and kind of homeschooling preschool. He was four. And then in the afternoons, my son who was on furlough would play video games with him and that was my quiet time and i'd go into the living room and i know i'd already been influenced by jennifer because i wanted to read dante's divine comedy and i had only read the inferno before um and i'd always been curious about dante and here's the thing i went to catholic schools from kindergarten through college and i never learned about dante I never studied Dante, which is a crime, like a mortal sin. <laughs> and it just shows you how abysmal Catholic education in the 70s and early 80s, I graduated in 82, um, was because, and so all my life I'd, I'd heard about Dante, but, and I was very daunted by it. And then when my middle son, the one who was furloughed, was... Um, was in high school, we decided to read The Inferno. So we read The Inferno together and we kind of self-studied. And then, but several years had passed and I wanted to revisit it. And I, I had gone out and bought, oh boy, the sun's gonna get in my, I parked in the wrong spot. Okay, let me see if I can move this. Ugh. Wait a second, I gotta put my tea down. My tea is keeping me warm. There we go. If I do this, will it be okay? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'll sit up. Uh, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I wanted to revisit it. And I know that watching Jennifer and her love for Dante um, and her enthusiasm and her explanations and analysis and everything really gave me the courage to start to, to try to read it. So I remember during that, that spring into the summer, I read Dante. I reread Inferno and then I read uh, Purgatory. There we go. I brought it with me. And I, I actually read another translation and then I would read it again. I, I would read it two times. The other translation had Italian. So I, I tried to read the Italian because a while ago I studied Italian and then I had been studying Latin. So it's kind of similar. So I would just read it to just sort of get a feel for how it would sound. And then I'd read the translation and then I would reread it in, um, in the Sayers translation with her footnotes. So that's what I did every afternoon. That's, that's how I spent my time those first few months. I think it took me a couple of months to each, uh, read each one. Um, and that's, and it was inspired by Jennifer. And I don't know if you guys remember that, and I, I believe that was before Tom L.A. Books came into the booktube world, or maybe it was just as he was coming in. But do you remember that Jennifer and Tom did a long, I think it was a live um, talk about Dante and I remember that they were going to do it and I couldn't, the time that they had picked, I, I wasn't available. And then I tried to go watch the recording, but for some reason I only watched like the, the be very beginning. Um, I don't know, I got distracted or, or something came up or something, but I'm now I'm going to go back and watch it. Um, I'm having trouble watching her videos because I, I just can't believe she's gone. And that's, it's, it's a little too raw right now but I plan to go back and watch a lot of her videos she just had so much to give she had so much to say she had so much insight and she's such a wonderful personality so anyway so that was a huge impact that she had on me that uh, she gave me the courage to tackle Dante and then other things that I remember about I remember her do, she didn't vlog much at home but, but I remember one time she was vlogging and, 
and she was cooking grits and she was trying to explain how important it was to cook grits correctly. And I thought, yes, that is absolutely true because my first year in college, I went to a college, a small Catholic college in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And the cafeteria food, ugh, they had grits, but they were absolutely tasteless. I had never had grits before because my, I was born in Washington, D.C. My mother's from, originally from uh, Massachusetts, Brockton, Massachusetts, and my father's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they had moved to Washington, D.C., you know, because of government stuff. And, um, and so we're, even though I, I've lived my whole life in, in Virginia, I've lived it in Northern Virginia, so we don't do grits up here very much. Mm -hmm. So, but, but the first time that I ha ever had grits where I liked it, I was on a trip with my husband. We we're actually in Charleston, South Carolina, and I had shrimp and grits for the first time. It was the first time I ever liked grits. But anyway, since then I had learned that grits, you have to cook them a specific way it's all about the flavoring, you know, getting the flavoring right and the seasoning right. And, um, and so I just laughed when she was doing, when she was very, very <laughs> emphatic about how you cook grits properly. Um, and I remember her, um, she would vlog when she went on vacation to the beach. She'd go to the shore. Now we go to the Outer Banks in North Carolina all the time, but she didn't go there. She went to the more Southern, closer to South Carolina, like uh, around Wilmington. I think that it was that area that she went to. Um, and she, <laughs> she picked up Moby Dick and she read it in like two days and she loved it so much. And I have always struggled with Moby Dick. I've tried to read it several times. I can never get past the Wailing Treatise. And then the last time that I tried, and this was a few years ago, I decided to listen to it on audio and then I would get past it. I would actually read the great American novel and I got past the whaling treatise and I was really, really proud of myself. And then I realized that I was putting it on in the car and then I wasn't listening to it. Like I completely stopped listening. I just tuned it out. So then I realized Moby Dick was not for me and I was just never going to click with Moby Dick but I loved hearing Jennifer talk about Moby Dick because it was like vicariously I could appreciate Moby Dick even though my little old self couldn't really appreciate Moby Dick on my own with Jennifer I could and I remember that was just so delightful so it's just a shock to think she's gone. She was putting out a lot of content at the end of 2023 and I was watching a lot of it and um, oh well I forgot to say that last year we were gonna buddy read Ovid's Metamorphosis. Oh I forgot to bring it with me um, and we started off but it, it kind of broke down but I, I finally finished it. I don't know if she ever did. She She didn't mention it so maybe she didn't. But I remember we talked a little bit about, and she asked me, are you going to try and translate it from uh, the Latin? Are you going to read it in Latin and try to translate it? And I said, no, my Latin isn't that good because the National Latin Exam Level 3, and I think they have changed it since then, but was right before you got to the prose or poetry, you would choose what you wanted to translate. So it was, that would be like the Level 4. And I was just at Level 3, which was just sort of the last bits of grammar. Uh, that she needed under your belt before you could really translate. So I told her I didn't feel confident enough to do it. Plus, I learned it at such a late in life, and I just don't retain it. I have to constantly uh, review in order to be the least bit <laughs> uh, confident in it, the, the least bit comfortable. I have to review and review and review, and I haven't been. I've just been spinning my wheels for the last couple of years on it. But um, but I wanted to read Ovid's Metamorphosis because it was this, you know, classic work. And um, so we did start out, but it, but it, it you know, it fizzled out on, uh, on her side. I think she had overbooked herself. But I remember her saying that her translation, she had the same book that she had in college and that it was very dry. And my translation, which I'll put in the notes, my translation was a newer one. And it was absolutely gorgeous. It was that the translation was just gorgeous. And if that reflected Ovid's writing, then he, he was magnificent. However, I did not like Ovid because I didn't like what he was trying to do. 
But anyway, <laughs> that was that was a, a time where I actually had Voxer, you know, exchanges with, with Jennifer. And then, you know, most recently I was watching a lot of her contact, content and she really inspired me to want to read Horace. So she was talking about the classic she had read last year, and she said that her her reread of Horace was a real highlight, and she was very enthusiastic about it. And in fact, the year before, she had asked me, have you read Horace? And I said, no, I haven't. She said, well, Horace is one of my favorite poets. And so um, I, I went around my house picking up poetry, because I want to read poetry this year, and I did a video about that. And I didn't even know that I had the Odes of Horace. So I hadn't remembered that I had it. And so I was like, oh, Jennifer Brooks was just talking about Horace and she mentioned Horace before. I got, I'm gonna read Horace this year. And um, and actually she kind of inspired this whole thing that I'm planning to do. And this isn't gonna happen till March. And I was gonna put up an announcement video at the end of this month. And I'm doing it with some other people too, uh, but I'm, I've always wanted to learn more about Rome and ancient Rome and um, Jennifer knew quite a bit. And I reached out to uh, Mark at Book Time for uh, Book Time with Elvis. Yeah. And he named it uh, There's No Place Like Rome. Anyway, that that's that's coming up. I'm going to do a real announcement. But this is all tied up with what I was thinking about what was going on in, on in my head. And I didn't even realize that she had already passed away when I was thinking about all this stuff about that was inspired by Jennifer. So, uh, so anyway, so I picked up Horace. So a couple days ago, after I found out that she had died and, um, you know, I've been just grieving her. Um, I picked up Horace and, and I stumbled on this poem and it was about Tef. And it's a uh, Horace, uh, book four, uh, book four, the seventh ode in, in uh, book four. I'd open it um, up, but I'm holding my tea. Maybe I can put my tea down. Just let me see if I can find it. It's a book about death. I mean, it's a poem about death. And it's sort of about, I don't want, want to read it to you, but... <clears throat> It just struck me because, because he's talking to uh, Torquatus and he's telling him, you know, you've got to, you've got to live your life to the full because you never know when you're going to die. And once you die, that's it. You can't come back. And so the finality of death and the uncertainty of when we go, and that's why we have to, you know, seize the day and um and while you know i don't think jennifer <laughs> was a pagan but she had read this she had appreciated horace and um it made me think of a, a of another quote uh, by irenaeus who said the glory of god is man fully alive and i thought jennifer was so fully alive she had such a rich life of the mind. She had so much to give and to share. She had so much insight. She was so affable and personable and funny and wise and just all those things. She was just a light, a shining light. And I feel like she did live life to God's glory. And we don't know when we're gonna die. It's this terrible, painful, reality that's a mystery we don't know when we're gonna go we don't know what death really is but but she gave so much in her short life in her in her 31 years she really did um for me she gave a lot and she was you know i'm old i'm literally old enough to be her mother and yet she inspired me and impressed me and broadened my horizons she was a real gift. And so I'm just so grateful that I got to know her in this odd format uh, in, on BookTube uh, where you know somebody, but you don't really know somebody. You can't find out the funeral home. 
or they passed away um, when they passed away. But, you know, you can watch videos of them and remember interactions you had with them and, and how much you enjoyed them. And so I'm going to dedicate this, this project, um, There's No Place Like Rome, uh, to, to Jennifer's memory because she really, really gave me so much. And I'm so glad that I got to, to know her. So anyway, I think that's it. I'm talked for 20 minutes. That's long enough. So, so I'll end the way Jennifer always did. Goodbye.